he wanted shots that were uh, dense, you know, um, as far as, you know, not, not uh, kind of longer takes with a lot going on in the background, just rich frames that just kind of go on. So that was uh, our, our goal. And I try to, um, you know, see how far we can take it with our limited experience level, you know, like, let's just go for it and take risks and see, uh, reach for this thing. You know, we're going to fall on our face a few times, but that's just part of it. And so, uh, we're really doing our best to, to bring that. And I had a lot of, you know, backlog of ideas going back to almost film school of all this technical stuff I wanted to try. Um, and having the opportunity to do that was, uh, you know, hard to, um, express how joyful that was, you know. Yeah, that, that was kind of the biggest thing. It's like, is, isn't for me invention, you know, like Craig, the production designer had this research that was like really helpful to him, you know, Rob, what he did, Linda, uh, but really, you know, being so, uh, so distant as far as the visual arts, uh, you know, I had really nothing to go by. So it was, um, it was just, that was the, that was the difficult thing to sort of not have that guidance because you know, because even the witch, we could we could look at paintings of a certain era, you know. But this, we didn't have that. The reason you have these viewpoints because you know Main Street and Harapsi like goes up like this. So how do you have these moving shots? You know, I mean, we used. Uh, I learned about all kinds of new tools. You know, that was like a camera car with a with a crane on it. You know, because there's no other way to get this stuff. I mean, we carried. Um, yeah, so that was. Uh, that was a challenge there, but you know, again, with the little V and the and the map, uh, you know, we like endless escape. You know, really planned to a T. We knew what it was. We knew that we had to take the backside of a house out to get him under the house, and I knew I had to tent it to make it look like it was actually under the house, even though it was open on the back. And you know, how to, you know, again, puppeteering these hypothetical uh, performers to to execute this shot. But the hope is that it's you know. Um, I mean, maybe it is oppressive, but it's like that, you know, they had, uh, I really enjoy the idea that like, the, you know, the camera is sort of, you know, knows everything like the, you know, the camera is leading the action instead of the action leading the camera, you know, like they really are linked together. It was a lot of fun to devise that sequence, you know, and I, that's, I'm very happy with it, you know, and, uh, it was daunting at first, uh, to sort of figure out how to do a raid as uh, simply as possible, even though it's like on the, on the face of it, very complex, you know, but like, how do you, how do you have the camera do something simple with like, but also depict so many layers of, of uh, things going on. So, uh, but again, having seven months to figure that out, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. Filmer's farm, uh, visually wonderful. Um, uh, not so easy to work, uh, work there. I mean, we got really lucky because it's very windy there. Um, and we shot some tests there just of, uh, just, I was working out my, my, uh, moonlight techniques for lighting there and we were grounded both tests because of wind. So, um, I really was worrying whether we could actually shoot there, but we already built the farm there. So, um, I was, that was a big concern. Um, I think if we actually shot on time, that would have been a real issue. But I, uh, when we returned in August, I mean, it was just prohibitive, like stuff which crane, you know, cranes were like the, the, the lighting frames were bending, the cranes were, you know, you just couldn't keep them up in the air. It was just so windy. Um, so yeah, that was very concerning. But the fact that we went back in August, suddenly it was very calm and we could shoot there. And uh, that may have saved us. It was just like, you know, reducing things to um, the essentials, you know, which is kind of a, uh, how do I put it? It's a, um, it's kind of a deceptive uh, endeavor um, because uh, you really have to think about it for a long time. Like, how do you reduce, how do you put, how do you pack all this information with all these characters and these abstract ideas of, you know, magic and following a fox the same time he sees his mother for the first time. Like, how do you sort of rearrange all these, all this information into, uh, just nice, clean streams of information, you know, in, in, in less shots, you could, 
you know, you could sort of just kind of pick off stuff, but that's just not very, you know, it's kind of like, a, I don't know, like a something layered and complex, you know, whether it's food, wine, whatever, is just more satisfying than, you know, just sort of like little simple nibbles, you know, so, um, and I just wanted to try that, you know, so it doesn't mean that you have to do a, a scene in one shot, that's just, uh, that can get academic, but something where you're really just, uh, how, how many things can you fit into one visual idea, you know, and still have it work. As far as like photographically, um, it was, pr you know, for me, it was actually pretty neutral. It was more through the camera language that I really got to play. It wasn't, uh, you know, because uh, there wasn't a lot of photographic texture I was putting on it, you know, like, like my other stuff with Rob or uh, probably will do again. But um, so it really was all about what interests me as far as like telling story in a whatever, a pure way as possible, you know. Um, so I, yeah, I don't, it's not like, uh, Harapsi is going to have a strong blue tone and then you go inside, you know, you'll have firelight will look red and, and, you know, uh, overcast will look cool, but there wasn't any, any, anything heavy photographically put on it. I really all, uh, it's all just kind of, what is the, rhythm, what's the tempo of a, of a scene? What's the, what's the, what's the feeling you have to, you know, what, uh, when you walk through a house, you know, just the simple difference of how you pan, you know, conveys a different feeling. It was like, you know, little stuff like that, even though a shot will, could have 10 of those things, you know, like, oh, this boom up just feels a certain way, or it just, uh, you know, I don't want to say it's like a dance, but that's kind of it. What's the tone through how the camera moves? In this case, it was the Berserker piece priest with his, you know, with his helmet and, you know, his two stabs or spears. Uh, and then, you know, and then he moves and then you show a little bit more and then you show the entire campfire and you show, you know, having that shot sort of unfold and then it sort of sits there at a certain pace. And then when they go into a frenzy, that, you know, it, it's then that we start moving around, you know, and it's kind of this low angle coming around the fire and the, the more that they intensify, the more that we, okay, now we're going to go in through the crowd and, you know, pick out Alex and have our shot intensify. So trying to take um, our cues, uh, our camera cues from what's going on, but at the same time, uh, distilling it, you know, getting rid of, just making sure it's all simplifying it you know, hopefully in the best way possible, you know, uh, you're not going to have these people going crazy and these people in a different mode, or, you know, you're going to sort of shape it to try to make it, you know, I guess shoehorn it into whatever the, the purest version of itself it can be. It's nice having rules sometimes, like, you know, we have firelight, we have overcast, and we have sun. That's it. That's what you get. So um, having those rules, I, I kind of like, I mean, this was sort of extreme. You know, like not having even a window <laughs> to work with, you know, but, um, but it's nice to be able to um, just, uh, I guess, rule out, you know, extraneous things uh, early on. You want to fully use the set that's been built for this raid, uh, which means you tend to see it from one side of the village. And assuming the audience, or, you know, and hoping that the audience is going to assume that you're in the middle of the village, so you're only seeing half of it, but really you're seeing the whole thing. So that, that helps simplify it. Like if you sort of see the village from kind of one side of what we built using the maximum depth throughout, the, throughout, the, um, throughout all the shots. Um, so that sort of, it's, we sort of planted action um, that, that CC came up with, excuse me, we planted action that CC came up with um, around the buildings that, that were there, you know, that Craig had there, and then we sort of, uh, depending on what cranes were able to do, like, oh, this distance between this building should be a little shorter, you know, and then we'll, we'll track, you know, we'll, we'll compensate by tracking more in this next shot and whatever. So, um, so it just felt natural that, um, I mean, we, we always assumed it was going to be depicted as four shots, you know, like we had four big action beats or main action beats and other like layers of secondary action beats. Um, but each, each one of those would have been a shot. Uh, we're trying to be realistic, but when you just, you know, when you're trying to work the depth of the set all the time, it's like, well, this just flows 
from left to right. Like why, why do anything else? You know, I mean, there, we had to have one uh, cut to depict early on when he jumps off the palisade and lands on the horse. But you know, that's, that's the best way to tell it visually anyway. Um, but other than that, you know, we're just gonna depict a, a single take. And that to me is the simpler solution than trying to shoot multi-camera. And that's just how my brain works. Working with Craig to make sure the camera can get to A to B to C to D, you know, um, fluidly uh, cutting pieces out, putting them back, Frankensteining sets back together, you know, whatever we had to do. Um, I uh, probably am getting spoiled by him, but um, yeah, uh, the, the art team uh, are a little fiddling with, you know, just just background details of tables and props and, you know, cheating things here or there to, to make uh, the composition, you know? So um, yeah, big, big thing, art department, and then just Dutch getting, pulling off these, uh, and, and VFX putting, you know, big, big time and, um, and finding ways to merge stuff together. Uh, I mean, the raid and, and putting, you know, stitches and things like a, the, the thatch of a roof or, you know, oh, um, tilting down to someone about to be attacked and then tilting up and having it all blend together and feel like one piece. Um, so it really, it really was a lot of departments uh, coming together, you know, to pull this off. So um, yeah, all these ridiculous ideas we had, uh, you know, would have been impossible without them. To bring, you know, to, to sort of make it for, uh, for grownups and to depict something, um, hopefully it's more exciting because it is based in um, uh, something real and something accurate and um, carries the extra weight of, of um, not just flights of fancy, but you know, uh, an entire way of living and a way of um, you know, a belief system and, you know, and, and, and feeling the, the anchor and the weight of that.